Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy campers. campers. And after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds, we realized we had so much more energy for activities. Come along with us as we explore the great outdoors. And join us on a brand new horsey adventure. So first of all, happy Easter to everybody. Yes. Uh, now, by the time you see this video, Easter will have been passed. But we are filming this on Easter Sunday. Yes. And uh, super excited. We are headed out on the road. It's a little bit of a secret, but we're going on a new adventure. And this new adventure is going to take two crazy campers to a whole new area. It did more than blow our socks off, Joe. It's actually taken our voice yes. with it. So really sorry that my voice, at least to start on this trip, is kind of horsey. Um, and cracky, but I'm very excited. Like I'm totally just, I'm ready to get on the road and let's do this thing. Now you may notice behind us, there is no RV. We don't have an RV anymore. We sold Eleanor and we're just going on a sort of cross country adventure. The car is all loaded up. You literally cannot fit another thing into the bed of the car. Not we have a, a generator. We have all kinds of stuff. We have our new electric bikes on the back. We've got a cooler right here. We've got some pillows. We're all loaded up and we're going to be going across multiple states and we're really excited for this. So come along with us as we begin this journey and drive up through the state of Florida to a new state. You can pack your bags cause we're headed on vacation Throw them in the back on to our destination Don't forget your toothbrush and you don't need no makeup Unless you want it, baby, that's fine with me Headed on a road trip, let's go, let's go Washing every town we dip on the past You're in charge of the tunes, just skip the ones that make Time just fly on by, 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 by. Hey. I think we'll make it just six more hours. I'm getting tired, feel it in my eyes. See your reflection sleeping so softly. Pin on the window, it'll be alright. So, in the past, we've had a rule. We only stop to go potty when we need fuel. Yes. Well, we have a 60-gallon fuel tank, 
So technically, we can go on for miles and miles. We can go approximately, based on the truck getting about 21 miles to a gallon, because I'm driving between 75 and 80 miles to an hour, uh, we can go approximately 1,200 miles on a tank of fuel. I'm going to have to pee before then. Even if we say we're going to fill up when we get to a half a tank, that's about 600 miles, which means that's probably about eight hours. The thing is about it also is it is financially upsetting when you have to get gas and you have taken this tank all the way down to like it's, a quarter of a tank. It's financially upsetting when you get to a half a tank. So with that being said, do you have to go potty? Absolutely. So when I bought my truck, within the first two weeks, I ripped out the fuel tank and I upgraded the fuel tank to an SMB 60 gallon fuel tank. Now you can only do this if you have a diesel tank. And honestly, I've absolutely loved it. I mean, it is amazing to be able to go a really long distance without having to worry about fuel. Now, like I said, it is upsetting when you get down to a half a tank and you get hit with, you know, like a $170, $160 bill uh, for filling up the tank. So we tend to fill up somewhere between uh, a half a tank and three quarters of a tank and, and just know that we have that buffer. But we have been driving for about 200 miles and uh, it's not even showing three quarters of a tank. And that is absolutely great. There's one downside to making this modification on a 2023 Ford, uh, as well as if you make the modification on Chevys and Dodges. And that is currently, at least on the Ford, there is no way to modify the distance to empty calculation. Now, if you make this modification on a Ford F-250, Ford F-350, F Ford F-450, so any of the Super Duties, prior to 2023 so if you did it on a 2019 a 2020 2021 2022 you can go into four scan and make that modification where the distance to empty will show you how much you can go but currently there is no way to do it on the 2023 model which means currently my distance to empty says that i can go about 582 miles but we know that that's not true I can actually go about another 1,000 miles, 1,100 miles, and it'll constantly bounce around. It's pretty much going to stay here at 582, even when I get down to like three quarters of a tank, uh, and it just kind of jumps up and down. Now, what does work is the actual gauge itself. So the gauge is accurate. So like I said, the gauge is showing just shy of a full tank. That is accurate because it's using the existing float. It's just the distance to empty is not accurate. So it's a little annoying, um, but it's not that big of a deal. I know if I get to a half a tank when I'm not towing the truck, I can uh, towing the trailer, I can go about 600 miles. And if I'm towing the trailer, I have about 300 miles left. We're in Georgia. We're here, Georgia. We're coming for your peaches. So uh, it uh, we're making really good time. It is currently six o'clock. We said we were going to drive for about four hours, four and a half hours. And we've done that thing. We just crossed the Georgia border. Um, fuel wise, we're doing really good. So we have gone about 390 miles and I have about three quarters of a tank of fuel left. I'm pretty impressed by that. Now, again, we do have a giant freaking tank, yes. but that's pretty good gas. So uh, what we're gonna do is the next, like probably major exit, like where there's a bunch of hotels, cause we don't have reservations. Uh, what we're gonna do is just stop for the night, we'll probably grab something to eat, see what's around there. I'm pretty impressed. We've only taken one potty break the whole trip. I, did we not drink enough last night at dinner? Cause I, I was know. thinking that myself, like we haven't stopped very much. But... As a matter of fact, we stopped at Turkey Lake and all of the men's restrooms were out of order. So they have a gas station there. The men's restroom was out of order. They said, go outside to the porta potties. Well, the porta potties were closed. So they said, go to the main building. So you go to the main building, those are out of order. And then they're like, go to the porta potties outside. Well, those are out of order. So they said, you have to go to the southbound side. And there are two toilets, 
for every man that is stopping at the Turkey Lake Plaza on the Florida Which is a busy one. And it is. Do you miss carrying your bathroom with you? I think that I'd go to the bathroom more when we have it because we're like, I can. Right. So maybe that's what it is. I mean, I I definitely could go right now. It's funny because, you know, we've got that footage of driving through Florida. I love Florida. Me too. But one thing I am going to say is it's kind of boring to drive through. Because it's flat. There, there's not a whole lot of pretty stuff to look at. You got flat land, the occasional cow pasture, um, a few little hills when you go through like Claremont and that area. And other than that, it's just more flat land. Well, I will say though, spring has sprung because along the side of the road, we wild did flowers. see a lot of patches of wildflowers with so many different colors, and that is really beautiful. But it's interesting. I notice what I'm on the lookout for. Yeah. I'm on the lookout for spring, and I'm noticing spring. We saw like a, a little group of, you know, deer together, and there were some there were some Hogs. babies hogs along the side of the road and it's interesting if i have set out for like in fall time i'm looking for fall leaves i'm i'm trying to notice things so i'm looking for spring and i'm finding it so yeah like i said we've got it's just less than three quarters of tanks so what we're going to do is we're going to find a place to pull over i probably should have pulled over at this exit because there was a cracker barrel and a bunch of hotels so we'll look for the next one we'll fill up so that we don't have like a 200 hundred dollar fuel bill you know, like when we get to the next stop, we'll just fill up tomorrow, go all day, and uh, we'll let you know how much we've spent in fuel so far for the first like 400 or so miles. So we used 20 gallons of fuel and it cost us $70. That's <laughs> pretty good for going 400 miles out. Yes. Considering our old truck, if we were lucky, we got 14 miles to a gallon. Now, yes, this is a diesel and diesel fuel costs more money. And diesel is a lot more money to maintain the engine, but I'll still take the better fuel mileage for the drive. Cool thing is, we stopped at a Circle K. We had some rewards, so we saved 25 cents per gallon. I will take it So what is long. 25 cents times 20? That's that's a pretty decent savings. Dinner. We decided to stop in Valdosta, Georgia. We found a Hampton Inn. The weather is really nice. It's a little too Florida-y for my taste. I thought we'd already be in cold jacket weather, but not quite yet. So we found um, this hotel, and we're going to stop and we're gonna look like straight up weirdos because we brought our electric bikes with us on our Hollywood rack. And even though I feel perfectly safe in this neighborhood, I'm not leaving my electric bikes out here like this. So we're gonna be wheeling these into the elevator and taking them into our room for tonight. It does have three different locks. So we have a cable lock that's over here so we're gonna take off the cable lock. I'm gonna say I've been very impressed with this Hollywood rack. I was really doing a lot of research for what is the best rack out there. And I watched a lot of review videos, a lot of things on e-trailer. And this is the one that everybody says is the most stable. Plus this one is RV approved, which means you could put it on the back of an RV. Now they actually say, don't put it on the back of a travel trailer because travel trailers experience sway and that could affect the hitch. So it's RV approved for motorhomes, fifth wheels. Uh, if you're flat towing a car, we're gonna put it occasionally on the back of our RV. And that's because even though it is a travel trailer, we don't experience sway because we are going to be installing a pro pride hitch on there now with that being said i'm not going to be putting it on the back of the rv for long trips for two reasons number one this is going to add three feet to us and i don't really we're already going to be almost 34 feet long uh but you know on a if we're doing like an hour long trip two hour trip maybe going to orlando going down to the keys i would be okay with that but for a really long trip I probably wouldn't put it on the back of any RV because again, the more weight that you put in the back, the more that you're going to have bouncing around. But super impressed. We were watching this in our rear view camera. There was zero movement. I would hit a speed bump in some local roads 
and they didn't move at all. I'm really, really impressed with this edge, but we're gonna get these off. So we undid the cable lock and then also each one of these has a lock right here that locks where the clamp goes on. The only downside to this rack compared to a lot of the other ones, there's actually two. Number one, it's got a center bar. So this inside one, you kind of got to come in here and, and feed it in. Uh, but the biggest downside is it doesn't have ramps. Some of the other ones like the Thule system and some of the other ones have a ramp so you can kind of wheel it up. This doesn't, so you actually have to lift it up but it also supports up to 80 pounds per bike if you're carrying two bikes. And we also took the batteries out. So I wish it had a ramp, but all of the other pros outweigh the fact that it didn't have one. No regrets. I know we look like weirdos, but my bike is safe and that's what I care about. Good morning from Valdosta, Georgia. It is foggy right now. Well, we're supposed to hit some bad weather, I think mostly tomorrow. So. We are running about 30, 40 minutes behind, but again, I'm sick and I crashed last night. I didn't want to really get up, but we did go a little bit further than I even thought we were going to go. So I feel like we're still on track. We're about 13 hours away from where we're going. I'm happy with that. And so if we can drive like six or seven hours today, that would put like six hours tomorrow and we'll see how things go. Uh, last night, we just kind of crashed in the hotel room. I took some NyQuil, something that I don't normally take, but I just needed to get some sleep. So I got those capsules and we had a little bit of dinner because there was a Walmart right next door. I would definitely advise if you're going to stop somewhere along the way. Look at the surroundings. This, this is a good area, Valdosta, if you're stopping, especially if you're not towing your RV. Although there is somebody parked over here in the field with an RV boondocking. Um... There's a lot here. There's a lot of little hotels here. There's a Walmart, lots of different restaurants. And it was nice that there was a Walmart here. And um, now we're going to get on the road. We're going to stop at a couple of Bucky's along the way. Uh, I just know that we have to watch our budget when we're in Bucky's. I would like to apologize right up front before this day unfolds about how we're going to have to fill every nook and cranny with Bucky's merchandise. I mean, we are already pretty full. Uh, we definitely got some looks last night walking through the hotel uh, with our electric bikes. No regrets. It's protected. I, I love our electric bikes. We're actually going to do a full video on them, but it's it's really been great. And I, I bought that Hollywood rack on Amazon. I'm absolutely loving it. The only thing is last night, I noticed that uh, I lost the lock. I guess I somehow didn't like turn the key on the hitch pin lock. So not the lock for the bikes, but the hitch pin. So if you're familiar or not familiar with the Hollywood racks, uh, the way the hitch pin actually works is instead of just a pin that goes through, it actually bolts in, which helps it to not rattle because you don't want your bike rack rattling back there. It's gonna break welds. It's gonna be bad for your bike. So it bolts in. And then on the other side, there's just a lock that makes it so that somebody can't unbolt it. It's listen, if they want to steal it, they're going to steal it. So it's still secure. It's still secure. It's like because it didn't come loose. It's not like there. It's not like a clevis pin on the end that makes it so the hitch pin can't come out. It literally makes it that somebody can't unbolt it and steal it. Oh, okay. Uh, I did look on the Hollywood Racks website and you can buy a new hitch pin with the same key. Oh, wow. So the one thing that I really like about the Hollywood racks is that there you have a cable lock that it came with. There's a lock for the clamp on the bikes. And then there's the hitch pin. They're all one key. They give you four keys, but they all use the same key. So maybe we could order it and then like have it delivered to an Amazon locker. Well, you have to buy it directly from Hollywood racks. It was $10. So I actually ordered two of them in case this ever happens again. It'll be delivered to our house. But in the meantime, again, all it's doing is making it so somebody can't steal the the you know bike rat itself off of your truck. And again, if they want it, they're gonna take it. I mean, you could use a hammer to get that hitch pin lock off. Uh, but uh, we just ran to Walmart and we bought basically a bicycle cable and locked the bike rack to the trailer hitch. So it's probably more secure now than it was before. <laughs> I've got some bad news for you. Bad news? What's the bad news? So we are about 20 miles, 23 miles away from Bucky's. Yes. It is currently 9.30. Okay. Uh, well, 
What happens at 10 o'clock? I was going to say, you're going to land me slap dab in the middle of Keto Beyond the Couch. So you're going to have less than 10 minutes to go potty and walk through Bucky. Dang, I almost feel like we should just wait and then just go to the next one. Well, no, I'm stopping at Bucky, so you can do keto beyond the couch. Wow! And I will go into Bucky's and 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 do some shopping while you're doing the premiere on keto beyond the couch. Well, How's you, that sound? You at least have to get me a coffee. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Joe. <gasps> Exit now for Bucky's. Look, I, I, you even have a little bit of extra time. It's currently nine thirty-eight, and so you're gonna have about. 20 minutes before we need to get into the premiere for QW on the Couch. How much damage can we do in Bucky's in 20 minutes? We're about to see. One thing about um, having the bike rack on the back is I have to remember we're about two and a half feet longer in the back. So I like to find a place where I can like literally back up and right. have it hanging over the back. Like I don't want to park in a regular parking spot because I'm afraid somebody will hit it. So I just found this grass patch right here. And this way the bikes will overhang that and I don't have to worry about anybody hitting it. We're going to head into Bucky's. Rachel is walking with a vengeance. She's on a mission. I've got my garbage from the hotel that I'm gonna drop off. How happy are you sometimes when you have an opportunity during a road trip to stop at a gas station, not for just the gas, not just for the restroom, but to just throw out all of the trash that accumulates, it's ridiculous. We may need these soon, hand warmers. We've gotten two steps in this door and I already want like five things. I take it you're not going to the restroom. The line is literally around the block. There's gotta be a hundred people on the line. For true fans of Bucky's, there's now an entire jewelry line, which I may have to get into, but first coffee. What do you think? Is this a Rachel dress or what? I feel like you could wear that on the low carb cruise. It even comes with a cowgirl hat. You could use that for the Roaring Twenties tonight. So I still want to walk around a little bit. I still need to get a drink. So I guess uh, I'll take care of your coffee and you're going to head back out to the car to do Keto Beyond the Couch. Because I don't want to miss out. I've never seen a Bucky's this busy before. This is really, really busy. Since you couldn't shop in Bucky's, yes, I got you a couple little presents. Aww. I will say it wasn't as much fun shopping in Bucky's without you. Well, thank you for that. So I got you a hat. Oh, wow. I love this. Amazing Grace. I love that. And I noticed, and we have the one bag that we're bringing into the hotels when we stop. You only packed one day's of clothes. I did. I was just thinking I need to get an outfit, but I'll, I can also shop at the next Bucky's. So I did get you a shirt. Oh, I thank you. I looked for the pajamas you like, but I didn't like the two designs they had, but I found that wow, shirt. Wow. I love this because he lives I can face tomorrow. And wow. I got myself a shirt. Let's see what you got. <laughs> it's all fun and games till someone loses their head. That is so true. And also you actually really love crawfish. Atlanta traffic. Man, I thought we would just totally breeze through it, but it looks like we did get a little snagged. It's 1130. It's so I kind of thought we would miss it, but um, it's okay. The only thing that this road trip is missing is music, but I can't sing right now. You may be thinking it's not, we're not missing no, music. No, we're not missing it. But usually I really do enjoy singing and listening to music, but I like to sing along if I'm listening to music. I don't want to just listen to it and not sing along. I'm that person that's super annoying on a cruise because if we're at one of the Broadway shows, I'm singing through the entire, like, Grease. When we saw Grease, I was singing. When we saw Mamma Mia, I was singing. When we watched Staying Alive, I was singing. It's funny, I was just recently uh, watching a video from one of the cruise YouTubers. And by the way, no, we are not going to start another channel for cruising. No. Um, but one of the things that they were like, things to not do on a cruise that annoy other people. Rachel. And one of them was, do not sing 
during the performances. Nobody wants to hear you sing. They want to hear the people on stage sing. Well, too bad what they want. Sometimes what I want takes center stage in my brain. So I think it's funny that um, we actually have a cruise booked for November for Symphony of the Seas. And I almost hate to tell you what the uh, Broadway play production is on that one. What is it? Because you're going to be singing up a storm. What is it? Hairspray. Oh my goodness. Good morning, Baltimore. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So we are definitely not making as good of time today as, as we, were, we yesterday. were yesterday. So it is almost one o'clock. Uh, we are about eight miles away from the next Bucky's. That's good news. Um, we have been driving for about five hours. I, I have not peed. And you have not peed. And I drank a lar an extra large coffee and then like a couple of sips of yours. So here's the bad news. Um, we've been on the road for about five hours. When we left Valdosta, it said we had about 13 hours to go till we got where we're going. Well, currently it says we have just less than 10 hours to go. So Atlanta traffic definitely was not helpful to us. But and we're currently stuck in some really bad bumper to bumper traffic here on I-75, uh, doing about 25 miles per hour. So there is some good news. The good news is we did not choose to leave our house on Monday, on today. We left our house on Sunday. And I think that that was really wise to add some padding and the older we get the smarter we get i think when we were young and young parents it was always about how fast can we get there and now it's so much more about enjoying the journey and part of enjoying the journey means that we have to know that you've got to schedule for some delays yeah it's funny because when you said there's some good news i was going to say uh, is the good news that you're not actually doing the driving, that I'm just doing the driving? Uh, um, I have offered. I You have offered. But, you know, there was a part of me that last night when I looked down on the GPS and it was like, if you keep going straight through, you'll be there by 7 a.m. And in the past, I've done that as this truck passes us. That's super loud. Um, I have done that in the past. Like, I on more than one occasion did straight through trips to New York and from New York. I did it once with Rachel and she I, swore we would never do it again because we had three children in the car. I did not enjoy that journey. And honestly, it had it had less to do with the children than you would think. It's just that that is exhausting. Yeah. Sometimes we don't think about how exhausting travel can be and i actually love some of the conversations that we had with phil and stacy and other campers on the rv unplugged season two set where we talked about how they don't try to push through like they don't try to drive at night unless it's just absolutely like imperative that they get to some place at a certain time and they're just running late for some reason because what is the point of an RV life if you are just going to be hectic all the time? Yeah, I, it, as I've gotten older, I, I'm more willing to take it easy. I mean, we actually, a couple of years ago, we were driving up to, I think it was Nashville. And we kept looking down going, we're not that much further, let's just keep going. We're not that much further, let's Ugh. keep going. And the trip was actually pretty good. I mean, we were going to stop and then we couldn't find a like a hotel to stop at. And, and we're like, well, we're only three hours outside of Nashville. So let's just keep going. And we did. But what that ended up doing was bringing us into Nashville at two o'clock in the morning. And fun fact, very difficult to find a hotel that's willing to check you in at two o'clock in the morning. They were all like, our books are closed. And so we drove over by the airport and they're like, no, we're, we're not taking the new guest at, t at two o'clock in the morning. We finally ended up finding one Marriott where the guy's like, mercy, I'll check you in. And he was so nice that uh, he actually said, I'm going to check you in because we needed two nights. 
He's like, I'm going to check you in and I'm not even going to charge you for the first night. I'm going to basically have you as if you checked in the next morning. But that kind of taught us, like, don't push it. Like, I'm looking at the thing right now. If we were to go straight through, we'll be where we're going at about 1045 tonight. There's a part of me and and the old me that would say, let's just keep going and save the hundred dollars that we're going to have to pay on a hotel to stop tonight. But then I start thinking that is my safety worth a hundred dollars? No. Am I, I'm going to be, if I drive for another 10 straight hours after having driven for five hours, like I'm going to be tired. Maybe I won't make the right decisions. And and it's worth a hundred dollars to know that we're going to be a little bit safer. Elevation. Pretty awesome. Honestly, it's so beautiful. And we have seen these like pinkish purplish flowers all along the road coming up here. And it's really just made me feel so springy and happy. It's actually been interesting because as we've gone up over some of these different mountains, we've actually had to equalize our ears. And we are certainly right. the only time we're ever having to equalize our ears is when we go scuba diving, but we're not used to having to do it as we go up. But it's really nice not to be car sick anymore. In fact, I could do work in the car. I could read in the car. It's really, really nice. And that has only been something that I have been able to do since I've started keto. Well, we made it and there's still a little bit of light out. So that's good. So we stopped Lexington? Yes. You know it's going to be a really awesome motel when in the parking lot there's a spearmint rhino exotic dancing place gentlemen's club so we were looking at places and you know we have marriott and hilton rewards but we really were looking for some place living on the edge <laughs> <laughs> more edgy so we were looking for some place where you can get to the door like a motel just because we want to bring our bicycles in right and like Listen, we did it, but bringing the bicycles through the lobby, aside from being a little bit weird... It takes some time. It took some time, and it'd be much easier if we could just wheel our bikes right into Boom. our room right here, and then bring them out in the morning. That'll save time. It, it will save like a half hour of everything in the morning, bringing them through the lobby. And score, it only costs us $46 for the night to stay here. I wonder why that is. <laughs> 
I don't know, but he had to he had to photocopy my driver's license. The sc the scary part is there's actually another a second abandoned closed down gentleman's club. Oh, next door. Next door. Well, we I mean this is an Econo Lodge and then there's also like a comfort. So it's like the choice hotels. Surprisingly, choice. we must have stayed here before or in these places because we actually have a membership for choice. I thought it was funny though when I was booking I went in and he gave me like a $20 higher rate and I'm like I just saw online he was like well you got to go book it online and, and come in I'm like okay no problem so you go to book it online and you know we do like to play this game where you know you get the credit card to get rewards and stuff and they offer me a credit card which I do not want and it was like if you sign up for the credit card we will give you a $200 statement credit towards your first purchase but my hotel room is only forty six dollars. Yeah, I'm not. I no. Is no. there a two hundred dollar? Maybe if we lunch? stayed for a week. Yeah, there you that, go. That that could be it. But this is probably more of a place that you pay by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're listen. All we need is a place to crash That's for a few right. hours. We've been on the road for over twelve hours. We're ready for and it. And we only knocked eight hours of our time off. We got about five hours to go. So if we can get on the road by somewhere between seven or eight, preferably closer to seven, then we could be where we're going by about 12 o'clock, one o'clock at the latest, which would be absolutely perfect because then we'd have enough time to find a decent place to stay up there. You're looking a little worried. Hey, at least they have like, you know, that kind of a card. Okay, so there's some cigarette burns on the, the quilt. That's your bed. That it, In a no smoking room. So clearly we did not, you had one direction, don't smoke in here. Clearly that was ignored. Um, but I, let's just see the bathroom because usually that's the serious. Okay, that was a, that, that was a- A worthless light a switch. A worthless light switch. Okay, so maybe just only bathe in the morning. There we go. Okay, I can see that. Is there no light in the shower? There is no light in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I know where everything on my body is though. So I mean, I can, I can. I know where everything on your body I is too. I can do this. I can bathe you. Okay, good. It looks like if you do a back forth, back forth, you do get a light in the bathroom. So that's definitely a helpful thing. Yeah, but I was hoping to wash you. Sorry. Again, it's just the place to crash. That's right. It, it's really hard for me to spend $130 on a night in a hotel room where we're going to spend like five hours there. I feel the way about this, like I do about stopping at an expensive RV resort right. to just like boondock overnight. Like that's why I want to use something like Harvest Hosts because we're driving through. We just need a place to sleep for the night, like a Cracker Barrel or a Harvest Host or a Walmart parking lot. I don't want to pay a resort $70 for the night if I don't even get to enjoy the resort. This is also why I really enjoy when we have an RV. Like an RV is nice because no matter where you're going, you're confident about your accommodations because yep. it's your place. It's your, your rig. You know that it is clean. You know that it feels good. And no matter where you're at, you can be confident about where you're staying. So. You know, we walked in, we really don't know what we're getting. Um, and even when it's nice, you don't have control over what you're paying. So both of those things can be frustrating. <laughs> What's wrong? It's day three of our journey. There and you go, I'll help you out. It's 6 a.m. I'm not sure I'm ready for 6 a.m. I know we have to get on the road. So it is Tuesday morning. Yes. Um, we're here in- It was a great store. We're here where? Where are we at? We're, Lexington? No. We're in Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington, Kentucky. Um, we have about five hours to go, but there is some severe weather. We want to avoid if possible. So um, we're actually recording this on April 2nd. Yesterday was April Fool's Day. This, no this, joke. This was not an April Fool's joke. Right. Um, so there are tornadoes, severe flooding. So... According to Apple Maps, we can divert, go up like through Ohio. It'll only add on about 15 miles, but it's gonna add about 45 minutes to the trip. But we're Safe. not gonna avoid weather. We're gonna be driving through wind and heavy rain, but we can avoid the 
avoid some of the tornadoes and the 60 mile an hour winds that they're predicting. So we're gonna do that. Hopefully we can still get to where we're going at the time I want, which would be somewhere around, you know, like 1 p.m. That would be great. So I have to tell you, like this, like no tell motel, it, it wasn't bad. It was actually good. I slept. That was the you goal. Did sleep. I totally you slept. slept in your own bed. I, I don't know what's with not sharing a bed with out. me. We we've had like tinier than we're nor you're we're used to. Well, and we're sick. Like you know, we've been sick, so it's I like I need you to cuddle and keep. I don't want to cuddle when there's like snot and sneezing involved and coughing. So yeah, it's been nice. We've been able to get some really good rest, which I think is also key to, you know, getting well, got to get some sleep. So we've tried to just get into the hotel room and go right to bed. So I think we were definitely asleep before 10. So I need to go pack up. And since we did choose a no-tell motel that has a door right next to where we park, we can wheel the bikes out. So I just got to basically put the bikes on. That, that will only take like five minutes because I can wheel it right out the door. And then uh, we need to put the cooler in. We have our little like carry-on travel suitcase. And uh, we can probably be out of here within like the next 10 minutes or so. We're just gonna drink a Celsius. Like they have coffee up in the front, but first of all, it's early. I don't know if it's ready. And second of all, uh, it's not like a great continental breakfast you're gonna find in Fairfield. It, it's a choice hotel. Right. So we'll drink a Celsius that we have in our cooler and then We'll stop somewhere along the way. We're, we're going to need, we don't need fuel. We've got, I don't know, more than like halfway between three quarter and a full tank of fuel. Um, but I do need to get deaf. So what I'm going to do is look for a truck stop that I can just fill up the deaf. They right usually the have pump. great coffee. And yeah, we'll get coffee. Maybe, maybe we'll pass another Bucky's. So we just stopped at Love's to fill up our diesel and our deaf tank. I love the fact that as we're driving, uh, our tank is starting to learn that we can go further and further because again, the distance to empty on my truck does not show accurate because we have a 60 gallon fuel tank, but it thinks we have a 34 gallon fuel tank. But now it says my distance to empty is 722 miles, but really my distance to empty is about 1300 miles. Um, but. It, it's just gonna keep bouncing around. But the, the actual fuel gauge is correct. Anyway, we stopped here at Love's and people have asked us like, what do we do to save money on diesel fuel? Uh, we have the open roads card and I'll leave a link for it down below where you can get that open roads card. Uh, and what's nice about it is, is you can stop at truck stops and you can pull through where all the truckers pull through to get your fuel. You're gonna get a discount on your diesel fuel. So uh, here we saved uh, 26 cents a gallon off of what the pump price is. So if we come out to one of these front pumps, we would have paid 26 uh, cents more per gallon. But what's also nice is over in the truck section, you can actually fill up your DEF fuel. So I don't have to bother going inside, getting the little things and trying to pour them in. So you pay less money you get fresh def going right into the tank. I could do it all in one transaction. You just, you know, go to Open Roads, use our link down below. You register for the card. Now people will ask like, why do you have to give your social security number? That becomes your control number because basically what you're doing is you're getting like a group rate. They're like a trucking type company. A uh, Couple things about doing this though. Please be mindful for the truckers. The truckers are what run our country. Without truckers, our country can't operate. And they wanna be able to get in and out. I mean, we're stopping here at 7.20 in the morning. These guys are trying to fuel up and get out on the road. So what you wanna do is pull in. It's nice when you have your RV because you don't have to worry about the front pumps, but pull in, fuel up, and get out. If you wanna go into the loves like we do right now to go get our coffee, go park somewhere else, get your fuel and then pull around, but don't sit in that lane and hold up all the truckers. We need to be mindful. We have the opportunity to be able to use those lanes, but we don't want to keep them off the road. So it's really important to do, to you know get out of their way quickly. But I absolutely love having the Open Roads app. Number one, I love saving money and I love the convenience 
of being able to go, you know, to the back and not having to worry about, you know, the front pumps when we're towing an RV or something like that. For my truck, it does present a slight problem, and that is it's got the really big, thick nozzles that pour out the diesel fuel very, very quickly. Well, when I made the uh, adjustment to our truck with the 60 gallon tank, it can't handle those high flow hoses. So I have to kind of like hold it like where it's only a little bit coming out. It still feels faster than the front, but I can't just let it go full force because uh, there's like a stopper on this new tank. But overall, it's been great. And I love the fact that I got to save some money, fueled up my DAF. And I know I'm getting good diesel fuel. The diesel mechanic who actually installed my tank said one of the best places to get diesel fuel is at a truck stop because they're maintaining their pumps, they're maintaining the tanks, and you know you're always getting fresh diesel fuel. Some of the smaller stations, sometimes that diesel will stay for a while or they don't maintain the pumps really well. So when you can, definitely go to a truck stop to get your diesel. So in an effort to avoid some of the weather, uh, the GPS is having us take basically back roads. So right. we're, we're off the highway now and we're taking some just like back roads, which you always wanted to just explore the back roads. Sometimes it's nice to get off of the highway and actually see the local communities instead of just looking at nothing but a four lane on each side highway. I love to see different architecture and you have to get off the main road to do that a lot of times. There is a disadvantage to driving all of the little local roads. I gotta go to the bathroom more. Body brakes. Well, for me, it's not even the bouncing around. It's that we're used to, you're driving in a highway, I need to go to the restroom. You stop at a rest area, you stop at a truck stop. But when you're driving one lane roads through the back area, through local towns, not as many places to go potty break. So uh, the weather is clearing up. I feel like we have avoided a lot of the worst of it. We're about three hours away from where we're going. So thankful. So we need to go to the restroom. So we're getting ready to make a turn here. And we found this place called Pavies. Pavies Country Store. So we're going to stop here, use the restroom. And I'm going to look at a country store because usually when I stop at some place like this, like a gas station or like a restaurant, there's a little bit of guilt in me. So I'm like, I gotta buy something. Gotta buy to, something. I'm gonna use your restroom. So let me buy something. So I'm gonna see if they have anything in there. Did you find any food that like you don't normally see? I know, right? Okay, so they also had some sort of old time cheese ball, but I don't know what that is. Um, I didn't see like a list of ingredients and it looked like there were more than, you know, a few chunks. I did see, Pickled rope bologna. Oh, that sounds good. Which I thought looked very interesting. So it's really cool. This is just like a country store along the way. Love running into these places. And I know Joe is super excited because cheese curds. It's a little chilly out there. <laughs> okay, so I got to talk about something that may cause a fight between the two of us as we're driving. Uh -oh. I love this truck. I love this truck. One thing that this truck is lacking that we had in the old one that I really miss because this is an XLT. It's an upgraded XLT model, but the old truck was a Lariat, is the dual climate control. Oh, so that I could do my own thing and you could do Yes. That. So the old truck had all electronic climate control and you can have your side and I can have my side. This one has the manual climate control, which has been interesting on this drive because Rachel wants like fast blowing cold air on her. I like velocity of air conditioning, even if it's not like temperature, even if it's hotter than I want, I need air. Circulation. You want air and I don't. I just want to be comfortable. Stagnant is what you're, the word you're looking for. No, I want a little bit of airflow, but I don't like high velocity. Okay. But that begs the question, and let us know down in the comment section, who should control the air conditioning or heater, and who should control the radio on an extended road trip? Should it be the passenger 
or should it be the driver? What is your answer? I feel like your answer is going to be the wife. I think that the answer is the wife. <laughs> I, I think that you have to come to a consensus. I don't think it's either or. I don't think it's you're either first or you're last. Like, I don't think that if you're hoping to travel with this person often, that it behooves you to be like, I am king of this vehicle. Because the fact of the matter is, you primarily drive. You drive whether we're well, towing or you drive with we're not. If we make it a rule that the person who drives the vehicle controls both the air conditioner and the sound. Okay, well, we'll start off with the air conditioner. For the air conditioner, I say it should absolutely be the driver because you have to keep the driver comfortable so that they can be alert. I think I can I can concede on the radio. I maybe back and forth. Honestly, I would be opposite. So I find that the radio is an alertness thing because whether or not you're hot or cold, like staying awake really is sort of can be helped by a, a radio of some sort. So whatever you want to listen to, whatever you want to hear on YouTube, you'll notice I'm wearing my my AirPods. I'm right. doing that because you're calling people I thought you were doing phone. it just to drown my voice out. You No, you're <laughs> listening to different YouTube videos that maybe I'm not as interested in. I want to do a little bit of reading so I can even listen to soft classical music going on the background and be able to focus on the reading that I'm trying to do, but not take away from you the driver. When it comes to the air conditioning, though, I think it really does need to be a 50-50 thing because I can't have it so warm and snuggly that you fall asleep. You need to have it cold enough that you why, stay awake. Which is why I think the driver should can control it. But at the same time, you can't you can't freeze me out or boil me out if you expect for me to want to be your companion. I think that if the atmosphere is just hostile to your partner in life, then that's when you get situations like, hey, you just go enjoy that hobby without me because I'm not as well. Clearly, we can't agree on this one. So let us know where do you guys fall? on your traveling, like which one do you, who controls the air conditioner, who controls the radio? For me, the radio doesn't keep me awake. What keeps me awake is temperature, but for Rachel, it's the opposite. So let us know down in the comment section. It's, it's cold. <laughs> we spent 1300 miles in a car, but we're from Florida and I forgot we were going north and I think I have a sweatshirt pack, but it's a little chilly here. A little, yeah. <laughs> Your teeth a little are chattering. Chilly. Oh my gosh. And it's suddenly, because this morning, it was in like the 70s when we left Lexington. And now all of a sudden, it's really, really cold. And, and the wind is whipping. And I'm making you stand outside. Let's get in the truck. It's looking a little eerie. It is. It's very, very foggy out. We went from like gorgeous weather to all of a sudden, it's like, I don't know, it's like a mist, dew, fog, very, it, it's almost like an Alfred Hitchcock movie I was gonna right say, now. it's very ominous when you're on your way to go do something important, right? You're like, wait a minute, did I take a wrong turn here in my life choices? So we're less than two hours away from where we're going, and I know you wanna know where we're going, but we're not gonna tell you. We're gonna, you'll find out in a little while. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? We are surrounded by RV manufacturers right now. And I'm not really surprised because we are in the belt buckle of the RV belt. We are currently in Elkhart, Indiana. Woohoo! And you know, we've gone 24 hours of driving. With 1,324 miles from Florida up to here in Elkhart, Indiana. And I bet you're wondering, like, why, why? are they in Elkhart, Indiana? What are they doing? Now, obviously, we're getting a new RV. But they sell those things in Florida. Yes. So the question is, what are we getting? And also, why did we have to come all the way to Elkhart, Indiana to get it? Well, you're going to have to find that out in the next video. Honestly... I don't want to get out of the car right now because according to our our car, it is 46 47. degrees outside. 47. 47 degrees. I don't really want to get out of the car. But no. we do need to get out of the car 
to go take a look at our new RV. I'm super excited about it. Are you excited? I am thrilled. <laughs> I am ready. I feel like not having an RV, like I've just been like, what's, what, when are we getting our new RV? I, it's hard to believe that three months ago we were putting batteries into Eleanor and we were like, we would never get rid of this never. RV. Never say never. And certainly I, never I definitely say definitely learned that. Don't say it on camera. For sure. Yeah, but you know what? We we went to the RV Super Show. We participated in RV Unplugged. And we made the decision to get a new RV. So, if you want to find out what RV we got and why we came to Elkhart, Indiana, you're going to have to hit the like button on this video because that does two things. Number one, it lets us know what kind of content you guys are looking to see, but it also helps build our channel. And then you also need to hit the bell button so that you're notified when the next video comes out. Because in that video, we're going to actually reveal our new RV and also maybe possibly do some interviews and let you know why we made the decision to go with the one we did. However, I will give you this little hint. Rachel has actually already named the RV. What is the name of our RV? Allie. The alligator. It's like alligator because we figure this RV is going to be a Florida girl for sure, right? And we want to be able to pass on little alligators to everybody we meet along the way because it's never goodbye. We love community and it's never goodbye. It's see you later, alligator. You just dropped a hint as to what we got. If you like seeing videos like this, please, again, do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. It really does help build the channel. And also make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell button. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Happy, happy camping. camping.